Today I'm talking about a book that I don't have a physical copy of and I don't know if that's a blessing or not because um, I did not enjoy listening to the audiobook either. It's Milk Fed by Melissa Broder and I still wanted to do a whole dedicated video about it because I think the premise, the topics, the book itself is you know quite interesting. I just feel like the execution is what didn't sit well with me but even then I gave it a three stars because I'm somewhat like I, there were parts I really enjoyed it's just some parts really um, took away from the book. Um, if you don't know and you haven't heard about this book it's been going around quite a lot in these lists and it's quite like popular on booktube, bookstagram, booktok, so many but anyways, this is what the cover looks like. It is, at first when I saw it, I was like, oh, I really love the colors. Firstly, I was right, it is a nipple on the cover. And secondly, I went into the book not knowing absolutely anything. So some people maybe went into it thinking that it's in a queer love story. Some people might, thought, might think that this is about kind of like ED um, and absolute trigger warnings for like EDs and also problematic mother-daughter relationships and also anyone dealing with kind of body image issues in general because I think she talks about it very um, like there was no warning she kind of dive straight into it um, so I ran into this book pretty blind and it started off talking about this girl who uh, it was very apparent that she had an eating she had eating disorder so I was like okay she's talking about it quite brazenly especially things like calorie counting and how she viewed her body and how her relationship with her mother really reinforced idea of what she should look like weight, what weight category she should be within etc so looking at all of those things it was very obvious why maybe she grew up to be the way she is i think what part was done really well is the beginning is quite like almost like autobiographical where she's talking about her little habits and her little rituals around food and i think it is quite common Taro, you okay why I thought these talks about rituals and kind of like these habits around food were interesting is because I have read quite a lot of other literature and seen a lot of shows and stuff and I feel like it's very true that when you have like this obsessive personality which sometimes I do too with certain things I develop these certain little rituals to manage my own little habits and I feel like that was done really well where she talks about like the way she um, eats yogurts and her lunches at work and how discreetly she does it so that she doesn't have to count calories how she gets like quite t taken aback when she thinks about having to go out and eat with people and I'm pretty sure I've been in friendships where I have been with someone who disappears for a long time after a meal and I'm sat there wondering like what's happened to you so you know like it it's not something that even though it's done brashly can I say like it's not done very sophisticatedly it's not written very sophisticatedly I don't think that takes away from the book because I think there are certain situations where people do indulge in those things and that's the thought process might be very very true with some people just because some people cannot relate to it doesn't mean that you know like this whole condition affects people differently and i think everybody's experience is so unique so this might just be one portrayal of someone dealing with an ed and it shouldn't be kind of taken as like a true or a false some people had a problem with the portrayal itself i think it's difficult to say how real or how not real it is because unless you've been there or unless you've literally interviewed like thousands of people you don't really know um, how people feel in that situation and then the other part which I thought was really interesting is the Jewish background or the kind of like exploration of Jewish culture. Um, I personally don't know. I think this is one culture that I've read the least or know the least about because I came to England about almost a decade ago and I've met a lot of people from different cultures that I've got to know very, very deeply. But sadly, I haven't really been around or like got to spend a lot of people time around people who um for, who are from a jewish background so sadly i don't know much about it i thought it would be a really interesting um dive into it so i got to lear learn a lot about like kind of their little rituals and their celebrations and how closely like family families are tied together but i think this particular character not only was she dealing with like her body image issue she was also dealing I mean struggling a lot with her identity her religious identity but also her kind of like cultural identity and roots 
And I also thought that that was an interesting backstory to explore, but there's quite a few different elements coming together. So there is someone, you know, battling with their body image issues, eating disorder, then religious trauma, and then trauma from childhood and, you know, having a very dysfunctional relationship with her mother. And then on top of that, just having an issue with like, where do I, I haven't really been taught are brought up in a Jewish way, so how do I cope with my identity in general? So these are the five main themes explored in this book, which together I thought made for a really interesting premise. So the first one third of the book I really, really enjoyed, but then they brought in things like this rabbi, which kind of made me think of like almost like a magical realism aspect to it. I don't know if he sometimes pops up in her dreams or just keeps popping up here and there, and he, he talks to her. The main character does take like she does take therapy which i thought was a really good thing to add into the book but she's very non-receptive to therapy which i also think is interesting because a lot of the times people want kind of a happy ending that oh you've overcome eating disorder you've definitely reconciled with your mom and then you've fought through you know developed a positive body image but for some people it's not always a happy ending for anything i think for most of us, it's actually a really difficult time to navigate these things. And maybe you can say that there is no point to this book because all of these things were introduced and none of them were tackled to like show us how they could be tackled potentially. It's just kind of like matter of fact put there. So I think at least one of those issues could have been tackled in the book where the person um, kind of finds a way to deal with one aspect of her life, but the book really ends without her ha having figured out anything. Um, one thing she does is a little bit about her body image is she falls in love with a Jewish girl and they themselves together kind of talk about how they feel um, as like girls, you know, who have been brought up with a Jewish upbringing and how this has affected their lives growing up and also like the main character herself doesn't really have a religious family so and she hasn't really like any education she has about her own culture is from her own done from her own kind of want and desire rather than going to maybe a jewish school so she what her knowledge is very much determined by the fact that you know she's gone out of her way to you know look into it but her friend is like you know the girl she falls in love with she has been brought up in that culture within that culture and she's been taught the culture she's been it's very much a part of her so that clashes not clash they don't actually clash that coming together is quite interesting they learn a lot from each other i think the girl she falls in love with also kind of inadvertently knowingly or unknowingly we don't really know does help the protagonist um, improve her own relationship with food so i actually do not remember the name of the movie protagonist but i name remember the name of the girl that she falls in love with i think her name was um, Mar mariam i don't remember what was the protagonist's name rachel okay rachel okay so it's rachel and mariam rachel is the main girl with all of these issues and mariam is the jewish girl she falls in love with um, and she, they meet in like kind of a, this yogurt shop that's owned by Miriam's family. And there's this scene where like Rachel goes in and she's happy about this store because the guy who works there, he never overfills her yogurt cup. He always gives her exactly what she wants and no toppings or anything, no questions asked. And she just eats that like yogurt very, um, like she has a ritual around it where she has the melty parts first and then she'll dig in and she talks about it like i think those descriptions and everything does show that like it's interesting it was very accurately written but where i found i started having issues is the rabbi coming in and talking to her in her head but also um descriptions of miriam who turns out to be slightly um you know she's heavier than rachel and rachel is the way she is because she heavily under eats she hardly eats and she's very very strict with her diet and miriam is just like generally just normal she eats whatever she wants and um, she and Miriam invites her to go to a um, kosher Chinese place and then they go and like really binge it out like they both love it but um, this is kind of a one-off thing for Miriam who goes home and continues but Rachel after this one session of kind of eating whatever she wants she continues to bitch for like in the next 12 hours then the next 24 hours and then goes on and then she feels really bad about it and heavily restricts so 
this going you know to and fro to and fro the whole book is just like that and ever at no point does she finally deal with it instead she develops this kind of like really almost fetishized view of Miriam's body because she's slightly on the more like I won't even say overweight because they never really mention her being overweight they just say she has like curves and she has a more I guess heavier body than Rachel but she really heavily fetishizes it not only her body and the weight of it but the skin the way she eats and she calls her moles like chocolate I think some of them were actually gross for me because I I don't know I don't really like the thought of like rolls and molds and talking about the different parts of people's bodies no matter what way they are like i don't feel like this is something that people would get turned on by because not everyone anyway a lot of reviews i read also said that it felt like she was kind of fat fetishizing which i don't even know at what point you know just fetishizing someone turns into like you know because of their weight but anyways all of that together and the heavy Oh my god, when I was listening to this as an audiobook, I was so uncomfortable because I've read so many audiobooks and I've read so much like, you know, more erotic stuff, I guess, that's in Japanese books can be quite, you know, filled with just uncomfortable scenes. But this was on a different level, like such an interesting plot, such an interesting premise. But then you go on into like descriptions and descriptions of so much SEX, so much of it. I mean, at some point I was playing it while cooking and I had to like pause it because I was just being uncomfortable. I couldn't listen to it while like preparing food. So you can imagine, it's just not even nice to listen to. And I was shocked when the book ended and it said narrated by Melissa Burrito, which is the author of the book. And I was like, there's one thing writing all of this and it's a completely different thing actually reading out loud. Um, had the, like it felt like there was so much repetitiveness also in those scenes. Had you removed those scenes and actually fleshed out the story even more, like a few more edits actually could have made this book really, really interesting. I think, like especially because I have don't read a lot of books about that culture, I think it would have been so interesting. And like Rachel's work culture is also a big part of this. I think that could have been explored more. At some point she is, um, I guess that's a big spoiler, so I'm not gonna say it, but she does develop a relationship with a uh, man and I guess she's bisexual, which in the book, like, it's not very clear. Uh, she doesn't really, her inner monologues are so irrelevant to the book or, like, irrelevant to anything. I wish her inner monologue would say more about how she felt and dealt with about certain things. Um, she went at length, you know, she was invited to celebrate Shabbat with um, Melissa's... You can hear my dogs. You want to come up? Come, I'll pick you up. At some point, um, Rachel goes, gets invited to celebrate Shabbat with uh, Melissa and uh, Melissa and Miriam. And um, I think I'm confusing the author's name and the um, character's name. So she goes there and this is actually such a, I think one, it's one of the most beautiful parts of the book where she describes her weekend over in this house and they're all like, you know, celebrating, eating, cooking together, playing games, talking, talking about their culture, their heritage. And it was really beautiful and i also like the juxtaposition of like when you know once rachel and uh, miriam established their relationship they she goes back for shabbat and then it's really awkward because i think the mother has an inkling of what might be happening with them so i think it's a really interesting that she wrote both of those scenes where one of them was just so heartwarming and so like wholesome and the other one was just so like uncomfortable I think those scenes were written really beautiful too so i just it's just like small things too much sex too much bad eroticism and too like that rabbi coming in and talking to um, rachel in her head was just unnecessary i feel i think if those elements were removed the book would have been really good and i think a little bo bit more exploration on um maybe one or two chapters from miriam's perspective too I don't actually that's unnecessary i don't know I, I would have loved to read that um in the middle of it and also a bit more like she what i liked about this book is that they did talk about her relationship with her dad a little bit a little bit more than these types of books you usually go into and i wish almost that at some point she could have more of a conversation with her dad to figure out the whole thing happening with her mom because had she had a very absent father who was not really helpful in any way i think it could have 
you know, I see why he was omitted. But in this case, she did actually have a somewhat of a okay relationship with her dad. So I think it could have been explored a little bit further. And also like how sometimes confronting your family members doesn't really work. Um, so she was advised by her um, therapist to have like a detox from her mom. So like take some time off and then deal with her own issues, which I thought was interesting. But she gave up like on day 50, I think it was supposed to be like day 70 days or something. She gave up and then it showed like she was like her weakness. She wasn't really able to keep that distance. And I feel like towards the end, it was just blur. Like I remember being so engrossed in the book till a certain point and then it's just becoming a blur, which is what I hate when I'm reading books. But I don't think it in any way sucked. Like I wouldn't give it a one star because I think it's very original and it was done really well. It's just would have really benefited from some more, I guess, editing. Um, but that's my very humble um, take on the book. I did want to talk about it mostly because I think a lot of people can come away from this book thinking very differently about different things, which is okay, but there were some things I would think about more critically. Um, but yeah, that's all for today. I'm currently reading um, this book. Oh, it's okay. Uh, it's called Night Bitch, which is also like really interesting, but a bit gross. So I feel like I'm having just a time with these like slightly uncomfortable books, you know? Like I wish they were just easier to read without me like having to put it down because i'm grossed out like i would rather be slightly sad at this point than be grossed out um but yeah maybe you'll get a review for that soon another one that i'm doing soon is tomorrow tomorrow and tomorrow by gabriel zevin which won the fiction of the year uh, for the goodreads award at least but yeah those are some of the books i'm currently reading are reviewing i hope you enjoyed today's review and i'll see you soon